Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to a racing strategy guide for round one of the Gran Turismo World Series Manufacturers Exhibition Season Round 1 with Group 3 cars at Suzuka International Circuit in Japan. Now long time subscribers of the channel will probably remember way back when I used to cover and do racing strategy guides for the FIA races. Back in the day when we used to actually have four a week, we used to have two on a Wednesday and two on a Saturday and let me tell you, the time consumption that it took for me to do all those guides was probably the only reason why I actually stopped doing them. But we're actually back for the first time in a long time doing a racing strategy guide for GTWS. And we're going to start off with round one of the manufacturers with Group 3 cards at Suzuka. Now it's not my best effort. I've taken a few shortcuts and I've made a few mistakes along the way in this one, as you shall soon see. But one of the shortcuts I've taken is to take screenshots of these screens here. So 35 laps around Suzuka in Group 3 cars for GT1, 15 laps for GT2 and GT3. Tire wear is at times 2, uh, fuel consumption is at times 1. So 35 minute race around Suzuka. Now there is talk about whether weather will be involved in this one. A lot of people are saying there's not going to be weather. Some people, are, myself, are thinking well, I think there may be a wee chance there. One of the big changes is there's going to be heavy damage in this one. It's definitely going to have an influence on the way that you want to approach this race. And we'll talk about things like that in due course. Let's move on to the first of the strategies that we're going to check out here. And before we get to that, we'll just talk about the car briefly that we're going to be driving. It's going to be the Corvette C7. This is the manufacturer that I have chosen for this season. Uh, I don't think I've ever been Corvette before in the past, but yeah, nice car to Group 3. Don't think it's the most competitive, but it's never really a bad car anywhere. Uh, pretty good on fuel, pretty safe, steady, stable and uh, usually quite a nice car to drive at the vast majority of tracks. So that's going to be the car that we're probably going to do most of these guides in. I will mention whether I think things will work out a little bit different from maybe some of the MR cars uh, when we get to the strategy options part. But the first thing we're going to take a look at here is the no stop strategy. So Tyway is only at times two, fuel is at times one. So fuel's not going to be an issue in this one. I've got the fuel mixture up there on the screen for you to see. Uh, obviously, it's only lap one here, but you usually get a fairly good indication uh, halfway through the first lap whether your fuel is going to last. In the Corvette, for example, here, I reckon 40 laps of fuel will be no issue whatsoever. You do short shift the Corvette, but I've watched a few other people doing some tests, and it appears that no cars, maybe with the exception of the Mustang, are going to have too many problems uh, getting through this race in terms of fuel. And if you do need to take a little bit of fuel on, or save a little bit of fuel, it shouldn't be too difficult with the fuel multiplier being so low. Good jump forward here to lap 7 in the Corvette, coming into the Casio Triangle. This is just to give you an example of the sort of lap times I was doing at this point. They're certainly not spectacular, but they are fairly consistent, but low 2 minute 2s with the tyres in pretty good condition. Uh, and obviously we've only worn them away about 15%, so they're pretty much acting as if they're brand new, you only lose you know, a tenth for about the first 20-25% of the trade being worn. Jumping forward here to lap 27 on the no-stop strategy, so that's about, about the 75% mark. You can see the tyres are now considerably more worn. We've got about uh, maybe 30% left on the front left there, sorry, front right. And uh, the lap times have dropped off significantly, so we're well into the 203 now, pretty much standard 203s at this point in the race, with the tyres having been worn down significantly. Around about a second, maybe 1.2, 1.3 seconds off the pace. Now we'll jump forward here to lap 35. Uh, we had to do a little bit of tyre saving actually here towards the end. I was kind of a little bit worried that the tyre wasn't going to last until the end, that front right tyre. Doing the majority of the work here, for example, when you go through a spoon that we're approaching, and uh, the, the 130R towards the end of the lap. And the lap times are now creeping into the 204s. And generally what I kind of found at this point was, you know, with the very worn tyres, it was so easy to make a mistake, you know. Uh, little kind of missed apexes get exaggerated once the tyres start to wear because you can't just, you know, you're not getting the grip to just kind of only lose a tenth. You lose a couple of tenths because you're running a little bit wide. And coming through like the 130R here, if the tyres worn last quarter of the race or the no-stop strategy, definitely a challenge and definitely something you had to be very careful of, very easy to run wide and uh, pick up some dirty tyres and just, you know, there's a, there's a second gone straight away if you do that. So the no-stop strategy, 100% possible as you can see here, but there is a big drop-off on the lap time and one of the big takeaways from it 
is you know the little mistakes are just exaggerated once you start driving a track like Suzuka with the tyres that worn. One minute eleven fifty one seconds uh, was the sort of finishing time for the no stop strategy there. So that's what I was kind of aiming for when I moved into my attempt at doing the one stop strategy. Uh, because obviously those tyres are pretty worn towards the end, so a fresh set of tyres, if you stop in the middle of this race, you're going to have a, a fairly significant speed advantage over people doing the no stop, and it's all going to come down to the all important pit loss. So, coming up here to Spoon on lap 17 on our one stop run. Now, this had not gone particularly well, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, we've done a, a 204.9 there on lap 16, just running wide at turn one a couple of times. Uh, there was a couple of other fairly second hand laps in there as well for whatever reason though looking at my tyre wear I do think my tyre wear was slightly better than the first run that I had done we're still going to be pretty worn tyres towards the end had we continued on a no stop strategy here but we are going to do the one stop and we'll get a look at that pit loss and fuels coming into the Castile Triangle just pitting at the halfway point lap 17 uh, the tyres will last a little bit longer on the second stint with the lower fuel and if you are going to make a pit stop in this one just take a little lift as you come out that last corner and make sure you don't cross the white line or end up in the barrier with a big red face because that would be fairly easy to do. You'll probably pick up damage as well, but at least you'll be in the right place to go into the pits and get that damage fixed. Heavy damage is on for this race, so that's going to mean any kind of contacts uh, with the barriers. You're possibly going to pick up some suspension damage, uh, aero damage, and if you really hit them pretty hard, you're going to pick up engine damage, which is going to require a pit stop to fix. Now, your pit stop just for tyres is actually maybe not as long as you might have thought. It's only going to be 18 seconds. Fuel no issue in this one, as I've already mentioned before. But this is a long race. This is a race that's an hour and 10 minutes long, and 18 seconds in the pits with, you know, that's not a whole lot of time to lose, considering how worn the tyres are at the end on the no stop strategy. So I was thinking, you know, I think this is going to be the quicker way to go. Now, we did have a few AI cars to negotiate, and in my eagerness to get past them, I'm going to make a very, very, very strange mistake here. We were well beyond the care, but the car actually lost traction on the care, but just seemed to take forever before it actually uh, spun off. And I've got heavy damage on in this, and that was 41 minutes of my day wasted, and I didn't have another attempt to actually do it again. However, maybe I can demonstrate the advantage that the one-stop strategy is going to have over the no-stop strategy in terms of lap time towards the end of the race. So, you've got the last 10 laps of the race on the left-hand side there of the no-stop strategy, and on the right-hand side we have got laps 6 to 15 on the one-stop strategy. And just take a look at those differences between the lap times. This is the sort of lap time you're going to be gaining on a no stopper towards the end of the race and over the course of those 10 laps I pretty much gained back the pit stop and that's only over 10 laps you're actually going to have 17 laps on the fresh tyre so you're going to gain a little bit more than that as well so the one stop strategy for me is actually a very viable strategy for people who are struggling on tyre wear and I would say if you're in the kind of car maybe like an RCZ or a Porsche or something like the Lamborghini, then the one-stop strategy is probably going to be preferable to you because Suzuka with severely worn rear tyres towards the end of the race, I think you're losing a lot more lap time than just two seconds or 1.8 seconds a lap. So it's not quite a one-horse race as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the strategy. It's going to be very, very, very close between both of them. And as such, I think it's just going to depend on whether you're a driver who's good in tyres, whether you're in a car that's good in tyres, whether you're on the controller, and see how your tyres are looking towards the midpoint of this race. If they're looking 50% worn, I would be into those pits, take this 18 second loss and have the much better tyres towards the end of the race. Uh, so there, that's your two options on the strategy. The no-stop strategy, your tyres are going to wear around 80 to 90%, your lap times are going to drop off to one, about 1 1.5 to 2 seconds by the end of the race. It's very easy to make mistakes as well, once those tyres worn so the, the mistakes can get amplified. You will save 18 seconds on stoppers, people who go into the pits are going to lose 18 seconds on those pits and fuel is going to be no issue whatsoever. For certain drivers, certain cars, this is going to be a very strong strategy. Uh, but for other cars, I think that's going to be a nightmare for the last 10 laps. 
Moving on to the one stop strategy, you lose 18 seconds in the pits, it's not massive over the course of a race that takes an hour and 10 minutes. Your fresh tyres could be up to 2 seconds faster over no stoppers at the end of the race, although remember you may well have some possible traffic to deal with and overtaking even with a huge advantage is never that easy eh, around Suzuka although it should be absolutely possible. You know that people fight in this game when it comes to being overtaken, so definitely it's something to bear in mind. It will be easier to avoid mistakes with the fresh tyres, and of course fuel is going to be no issue for this one on this strategy as well. So you're just stopping for the fresh tyres, but that's the strategy folks, I don't know what you think of that. I think it's very, very, very interesting. I think uh, the one-stop strategy is actually going to be better for more people than the no-stop strategy. Although if you can do the no-stop strategy, you may well be in the box seats for this one. So, yeah, that's going to be it for the strategy advice. It's hard for me to recommend one over the other. I've kind of given you my sort of pros and cons for both of them. What cars I think are probably better suited to what strategy. And it's really going to be down to you to sort of take the info, take the numbers and make a decision based on that yourself. But hopefully you found this video useful in some way, shape or form. If you have, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button, watch out for the heavy damage, be careful around your fellow competitors, show some respect into the corners, have a good race, and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.